God gave me this word earlier this week, and, and it was, it's based on a scripture that's been on my heart for a little while, but it was based on um, getting to a spot in your life where you feel stuck, where you start asking questions, why? Why am I here? Why am I doing this? Why is God not moving in this situation? Why is he doing it in this family and not in my family? Why is he doing it in that person's job and, my, and not my job? Why, why are they getting a promotion and I'm not getting a promotion? Why are they seeing signs, wonders, and miracles, and I'm not seeing signs, wonders, and miracles? Amen. Is anybody with me? Have you ever been at a spot in your life where you start asking these questions? Just asking why. Why, God? Why am I feeling stuck? So I don't know about you, church, but I'm ready to not be stuck anymore. Amen. I'm ready to see the glory of the Lord. I'm ready to see signs, wonders, miracles. I'm ready to see lives changed. I'm ready to see uh, prophecies come to life. So how are we gonna do this? How are we gonna do this? How are we gonna see it? You know, it's time for the floodgates of heaven to be opened up. Amen, it's time to see Joel chapter two come to life. It's time. It's time for God to pour out his spirit on all flesh. Amen. It's time for his sons and daughters to prophesy, for old men to dream dreams and young men to see visions, amen. It's time. We've been praying for it. We've been desiring it. It's been the desires of our heart, amen. Here at, here at Elkhorn anyways, it's been the desires of our heart. Is that the desire of your heart this morning? Do you wanna see the Bible come to life right now? Not 10 years from now. Not 20 years from now, not even a month from now, but right now, today, do you want to see the Bible come to life? Amen. Who's with me? You know, Pastor Brian's been teaching us for a long time. Now is the time. This is the place. And we are the people. Do you believe that? Do you believe that we are the people that can see all of these things happening in Joel chapter 2? Amen. But you know, that all sounds great. We can hoop and holler and jump and scream and yell and get excited and keep talking the talk, but for some odd reason, we're not seeing it. We're not seeing it. We're talking about it, but we're not seeing it. We're talking about it, but we're not seeing any fruit. Amen? We've got to quit talking the talk and start walking the walk. There's got to be some type of progression to get to the promise. Amen, you've got to progress to get to the promise. We've got to do what the Bible tells us to do. So what does the Bible say about this? And this is the, the scripture that's just been burning in my heart. And it's Psalm 24, I'm gonna start with verses three and four. It's gonna be on the big Bible. If you wanna turn to it in your Bible, who carries a Bible out there? All right, we got several of you out there carrying a Bible, amen. So let's get started. Psalm 24, verses three and four. It says, who may ascend into the hill of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitfully. All right. So I also wanna back this scripture up with scripture from the New Testament, okay? Because I, I want to frame this context of, of where I'm going with, with this scripture and the, the steps that we have to take and some things that, that could be going on in our lives that are keeping us from seeing God's glory. All right, so the New Testament, Romans 3.23. Everybody knows that, right? It says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Can we all agree on that? All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Okay, 1 John 1, verses eight and nine, it says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So I wanna back up just a second. So when I read that, that first verse, Psalm 24, 
verses three and four, it, it gives you a, a kind of a stigma or a feeling that you have to be perfect in order to ascend the hill of the Lord, right? That's kind of, kind of what, it, what it sounds like, right? And it, and it sounds unattainable or un, unreachable, but this is the context that I, I want to set for you, okay? So if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then I wanna go back to Matthew 5, verse 48. I'm gonna read out of the, the AMP translation this morning. It says, you therefore will be perfect, growing into spiritual maturity, both in mind and character, actively integrating godly values into your daily life as your heavenly father is, per is perfect. So the whole point to that is there's a difference between sin and iniquity. All right, everybody say iniquity. There's a difference. So what is sin? Sin is anything that separates you from God. Anything that separates you from God. What is iniquity? Iniquity is willful sin with no repentance, okay? In, in 1 John 1, verses eight and nine in the AMP translation, it actually tells you that if you are willing to continually repent, he will continually cleanse you, okay? He will continually cleanse you. Therefore, after you are cleansed, your sin is washed away from you. You are made white as snow. You are made pure. You're made clean once again but it hinges on the condition of repentance. Hinges on the condition of repentance. What is repentance? Turning from your sin and changing the direction you're heading. So church, ask yourself this question this morning. What is it that I need to repent from? What are some things going on in my life that are keeping me from what God has in store for me? So we all, I believe, can, can think back to a time, at least one time, where we knew had God's, God had something big in store for us, all right? Who can, who can agree with me there? That God's got promises for you. God's got a plan for you, right? We've been quoting Jeremiah 29, 11 our whole life. But I'm here to tell you this morning and to remind you of what the word of God says about you, that he does have a plan for you plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future, okay? But these hopes and these promises, like I just said, are hinged on repentance, are hinged on repentance, all right? All right, so are y'all ready for some preaching now? That was just the introduction. So I wanna read this, this, these two verses once again. Psalm 24, verses three and four. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. And that brings me to my title this morning. What's holding you back? What's holding you back? What's holding you back, church? So to start, I wanna say this, you cannot change anything you're not willing to confront. You cannot change anything you're not willing to confront. And if we were all honest with ourselves this morning, we could all have something that we need to confront in our life. Something that needs to change, but you've been scared of confronting it. You've been scared of calling it out. You've been scared of the retaliation of the enemy, okay? But we're here this morning, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about that. It's, it's gonna be hard, right? The verse says, who can ascend the hill of the Lord? Who can go up the hill of the Lord? How many of you know that, that once you get saved, it's not a cakewalk? How many of you know life is not a cakewalk in general, let alone if you're saved or not, right? It's a hill, who can ascend the hill of the Lord? It's not descending, it's not that you start at the top and you work your way back down. You've gotta go up. Your walk with the Lord is going to be uphill the entire way until we get to heaven. 
it's gonna be uphill, and I just want you to realize that. It's not gonna be easy. God, God never said that it was going to be easy. God just said that it was going to be worth it. Amen? It's not gonna be easy, it's gonna be worth it. So let me get into this. Four areas that will hold you back. Four areas that will hold you back. Number one, based on Psalm 24, first area that, that can hold you back is your hands. Your hands, okay? So what do I mean by that? I mean your actions and your deeds. Your actions and your deeds. The things that you do on a daily basis. They can hold you back from ascending the hill of the Lord. They can hold you back from ascending the hill of the Lord. You know, church, it's time to quit playing the grace card. How many of you played, have, have played the grace card? That ace in the hole, right? I know I have. I know that, that when I was, um, I, I mean, it's six years ago. It's when, when God transformed my life. I got saved at a young age, but six years ago is when I had my second touch. Who knows about that second touch? And they transform your life. He transforms your life. He takes the scales off your eyes and you can start to see what's actually going on in your life. You get that realization that it's not just sin anymore, it's willful sin. It's that iniquity that I was talking about. All right, it's, it's willfully saying, I know this is wrong, but I'm gonna do it anyways. But we play that grace card, all right? We play that grace card so that we can do whatever we wanna do. But we've gotta stop playing that card. And we've gotta start living a, a set apart, holy life that God calls us to live. God doesn't call us to live separated from him. He does not call us to, to live separated from him. He wants us to be in constant communion with him. And we cannot be in constant communion with him if we are not willing to lay aside what this world has to offer. So we've gotta have clean hands to ascend the hill of the Lord. Let me ask you this morning, do you have clean hands? Did you walk into this place this morning with clean hands? Can you raise, raise your hands and surrender and say, God, I'm clean. I've laid aside what the world has to offer. I'm ready to ascend the hill of the Lord. My hands are clean. Or are you on the other side? Are you where I was six years ago? When I couldn't raise my hands when I walked in on a Sunday morning because I had some stuff in my, my back pocket that I did the night before. Amen? Y'all with me? All right. What you do and, and how you act, it matters, church. What you do and how you act, it matters. How you treat people, how you talk to people, it matters. How you go about your daily life, your actions, the things you do, the things you watch, the things you drink, the things you participate in, they matter, church. Someone is always watching. My dad told me that a long time ago. Someone is always watching what you do. Somebody's always watching you to see if they can follow you. Are you worth following today? Are you a Christian this morning? I'm gonna talk to the Christians really quick. Are you a Christian this morning that's worth following? Does your life reflect what the Bible says to reflect? Are you ascending the hill of the Lord each and every day? It's time we start looking at things going on in our lives through the correct set of lenses and our spiritual glasses. We've got, to, we've got to stop looking at things through old religious lenses. Because I believe that's where we got that deck of cards from, is our old religion, our old lenses that we can, we can just say, well, God will forgive me. I can do whatever I want. God's got me. Once saved, always saved, right? Come on, where's my old Baptist in here? Once saved, always saved. But that does not give us an excuse to sin. That does not give us an excuse to sin. That deck of cards that you got in your back pocket, I suggest that you lay those at the altar this morning and you let them burn. You've got to make your mind up that I'm not going to live this way anymore. I'm gonna get a new prescription in my spiritual glasses. I'm gonna start looking at my situation in my life, how God wants me to look at my situation in my life. Not how my mama wants me to, or my daddy wants me to, or how grandma said I could. 
But what does the word of God say about how I'm supposed to live? That's what matters. That's what matters. You know, church, just like me six years ago, my prescription in my spiritual glasses, it wasn't up to date. So let me ask you this morning, is it time to go to the spiritual eye doctor? Is it time, Jennifer, is it time to get a new prescription in your glasses? It's time to start seeing things differently. It's time to stop conforming to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Start seeing things differently. What is it? What is it that's causing your vision to be blurred? Is it religion? Is it tradition? What is it? I, I know I'm asking a lot of questions this morning, but I believe God downloaded these questions in me to challenge not only me, but to challenge you. Because it's time to be challenged. It's time to place a demand on the word of the Lord. <laughs> And I promise you, he's gonna back up every word he says in that Bible. He's gonna back up each and every one of them. This is a little side note, a little rabbit trail, but I, I feel that the Lord wanted me to tell this to you. If your opinion doesn't line up with the word of God, you need to keep it to yourself. Amen. If your opinion does not line up with the word of God, you need to keep it to yourself because it's not helping anybody. And it's continuing to destroy relationships. It's destroying jobs. It's destroying marriages. It's destroying the lives of the kids in your life. Is anybody with me this morning? If it does not line up with the word of God, keep it to yourself. We cannot go from glory to glory and ascend the hill of the Lord if we continue to look at our situations through these old religious spiritual glasses. We cannot. Our actions are gonna stay, stay dirty. Our hands are gonna stay dirty. It's time to wash our hands of our past, wash our hands of our sin, and start ascending the hill of the Lord. And I'll never forget when Pastor Brian preached this sermon. He said, dirty hands cannot hold the Spirit of God. Dirty hands cannot hold the Spirit of God. So I ask you this morning, are your hands clean or are your hands dirty? Are they clean or are they dirty? All right, number two, second area that can hold you back is your heart, your heart. Amen, the Bible talks a lot about the heart, talks a lot about the heart. You know, church, it's time for a Psalm 1914 heart check. It's time to ask myself, are the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart pleasing to you, God? Are the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart pleasing to you? You know, it doesn't, doesn't take long to figure out where somebody's heart's at if you hear them speak. Because the Bible says that out of the mouth speaks the what? The heart. So let me ask you this morning, what are you filling your heart with? What are you allowing to come in that could be destructive or that could come out as destructive, right? What are you allowing to come in? So what's your motive? You know, our, our, our motives for doing things, those are developed in our hearts. What's your motive for being here this morning? Let's just get, let's just get real on Sunday morning. Amen. What's your motive for being here? Are you just checking your name off the list? Or are you here to allow the spirit of the Lord to change your life? Are you here to experience the freedom and just like Pastor Joey said earlier, where the, where the spirit of the Lord is, there's what? There's freedom. Are you free this morning? <laughs> is your heart allowing you to be free? Do you have a pure heart this morning? Do you have a pure heart? What is your heart full of? I know this is tough to start thinking about, but we've got to ask ourselves these questions if we're going to ascend the hill of the Lord. Amen. Is your heart full of anger? Is it full of bitterness, unforgiveness, lust, you name it? Or, or is it full of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control? Is it full of the fruits of the Spirit? 
Because the, the Bible also says that a tree is known by what? It's fruit. What kind of fruit are you known by this morning? What kind of fruit are you known by this morning? Is your heart hard? Is it calloused? Is it unchangeable? Because the time that you think that you've arrived is the time when God's going to humble you the most. The time when you think you've arrived is the time when God is going to humble you the most and let you know, son, daughter, you don't have it all figured out. I'm doing things in you that you can't even imagine. So when are you gonna let go and let me do my thing? Stop trying to do God's thing for him. Amen, stop trying to do God's thing for him. You know, church, the whole idea of church is, is for you to come in here, hear the word, and be equipped for the week ahead, right? So if, if you walk out of here and your heart is still bitter, your heart is still hard, calloused, you still got unforgiveness, hatred, anger in your heart when you leave, that's on you. That's on you, okay? We've got to stop making excuses for leaving the presence of God unchanged, okay? We've got to stop doing that. We've got to stop doing that. I want your heart to be pure this morning. If your heart's not pure right now, you're gonna have an opportunity here in just a little bit to make your heart pure, to make your heart clean, to make your heart free. You're gonna have a chance to repent and confess of your sins. And the Bible says, based on the verse that we read just a little earlier in 1 John, that if you confess your sins, that he is faithful and just, to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So I don't care what you did last night, God can cleanse it. I don't care what you did this week, God can cleanse it. I don't care what you said to your wife this morning, God can cleanse you, God can take it away. But it's up to you, it's up to you. Is God's word written on your heart this morning? Is God's word written on your heart just like it was written on Jeremiah's heart? Is God's word written, is it, is it tattooed? Is it tattooed on your heart? It's not written in pencil where it can be erased. Is it tattooed on your heart? So when, when things happen in your life, when people try to come against you or, or things aren't lining up the way they should line up, or you didn't have a good day at work or your kids are getting on your nerves or whatever it may be, is the word of God written on your heart so that you can speak the word over any situation that you encounter, okay? is the word written on your heart this morning. Let's go to number three. The third area that can hold you back are your idols. Your idols. So what idols do you have in your life that need to be torn down? What idols do you have in your life that need to be torn down? You know, when I, when I started preparing this sermon, the first example that came to life was when, when Aaron allowed the Israelites to form the golden calf when they were in the wilderness. Okay, y'all know that story? Moses was, was up on the mountain talking to the Lord. He was up there for an extended amount of time and then Aaron got talked into by the Israelites, by God's people, God's chosen people to build an idol for them to worship. He got talked into that. And once God knew that they did that, God was getting ready to destroy them. He was getting ready to take them out. But Moses, what did he do? He interceded for those people. He interceded for those people. And I want you to know this morning that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father interceding for me and you, okay? For those idols that we've built up in our life, Jesus is interceding for us. God. Daddy, give them another chance. I know they're gonna come around. I know they're gonna give that up and they're gonna do what, what your word says. Daddy, just give them another chance. How many chances has God given you? How many chances has God given you to tear that idol down? Have you allowed the wrong people in your life and allowed them to talk you into building an idol that you worship more than you worship Jesus? Because if you are surrounded by the wrong people, you're going to start worshiping the wrong things. Amen? 
So have you allowed the wrong people in your life to talk you into fabricating an idol that you worship more than you worship Jesus? So what is it? What is your idol this morning? Is it work? Is it your kids? Your spouse? Your hobbies? Your habits? Are they idols in your life this morning that are keeping you from ascending the hill of the Lord? You know that you spend more time with them than you spend with Jesus? I'm not saying it's a bad thing to have hobbies or, or different habits or routines or, or whatever, but they cannot come before Jesus. They cannot come before your Savior, the one who laid down his life so that you may live. Amen? So what are those idols this morning? Number four, the fourth area based on Psalm 24, verses three and four that can hold you back from ascending the hill is your deceit. Your deceit. You know, church, we've got to stop fooling ourselves and trying to fool others. <laughs> we've got to stop fooling ourselves and we've got to stop trying to fool others because let me tell you a little secret. People can see right through you. People can see right through you. People can see right through fake, all right? They can see right through you trying to live a life that you say you're living, but you're not really living. You're talking the talk, but you're not walking the walk, and it's easy to see through it, all right? I didn't see it until six years ago, but everybody around me saw it, right? So young people, this morning, don't try to be hiding stuff from your mom and dad because they already know. They already know. Adults, Stop trying to hide stuff from the Lord because he already knows, all right? And you need to come to the realization of the truth in your life that unless I stop lying to myself and lying to others, I'm not going to be able to ascend the, Lord, uh, the hill of the Lord and reach the promise that he has for me. Stop living two different lives. It's miserable. I know it's miserable because I did it. I live two different lives. At home, I was, I was a, you know, a Sunday school teacher and I was going to church every Sunday. But when I was out on the road, what was I doing? I was probably watching things I shouldn't be watching. I was drinking things I shouldn't be drinking. I was talking things I shouldn't be talking. Come on, church, is anybody with me? Can anybody testify that that's been you before? Amen, it's time to stop lying to yourself, trying to think that you're getting away with something because you're not. God sees you. Other people see you. Like I said earlier, somebody's always watching. Somebody's always watching. Are you making promises that you can't keep? Are you making promises that you can't keep? Are you promising to be the, the father and the husband and the son or the daughter or the wife or the mother that could give you everything, right? But... You're allowing other people to influence you. You're allowing other people to build idols in your life. You're allowing your heart to get hard and you're not able to keep the promise that you made to the ones that you love the most. So are you making promises that you can't keep? Let me ask you this, are you faking it this morning? Are you faking it? If so, it's time to get real. It's time to get real. So as I start to wrap this thing up, what's the point of all this? What's, what's the point of this word? What's the point of, of me even talking to you about all this? Why should we guard ourselves so we won't be held back by our hands, our heart, our idols, or our deceit? What's the point, Drew? Well, if you read on to Psalm 24, five, it tells us exactly that. It tells us why. It says this, he shall receive blessing. Who wants to be blessed? He shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. So why does it matter? Well, if you wanna live in the blessing, it should matter to you. If you wanna be blessed in your life, it should matter to you how you act, how you talk what you allow to come into your heart. It should matter. 
Who wants to live in the blessing? Would you act like it? Would you act like it? Until I started acting, I wanted the blessing. I wanted the Bible blessings, and I know we've said this before, but I wasn't willing to do it the Bible way. You want the promises of God, but you're not willing to do it God's way. So what's the point? The point is you can live in the blessing. You can live a prosperous life. You can walk in the promise and the will of God. You know, Romans 12, 2, it says, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God for your life. Who wants the will of God for your life to come to pass? Amen? I know I do. That's why I gotta check myself. I've gotta make sure that my, my hands are clean, my heart's pure. I've gotta make sure that I don't have any idols that are coming before Jesus. I don't have any idols, period, in my life that are, I'm raising up to a, a, an equal level of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I've gotta make sure I'm not trying to fool anybody. What are my motives? I've gotta ask myself these things. So if you wanna live in the blessing that the Bible has for you, then you gotta start doing it the Bible way. You gotta start doing it the Bible way. You know, I think about, about Moses and Aaron again. And, and God, God loves you. I'm here this morning to tell you that God loves you. Okay? Maybe somebody needed to hear that. God loves you. God wants you to live in the promise and the will that he has for you. Okay? But if you continually disobey and you continue to not have any repentance in your life, in your heart, then you automatically disqualify yourself from the promise that God has for you. If you're not willing to confess your sins and be made clean, then you disqualify yourself. You disqualify yourself. I was disqualifying myself from the blessing that God had for me. I was disqualifying myself from the, the marriage that God wanted for me and Sarah the promise of, of kids in our life that we could raise up in the way of the Lord so that when they grow old, they will not depart from it. I was disqualifying myself. I'm asking you, are you disqualifying yourself from what God has for you this morning? We've gotta ask ourselves these tough questions. We've gotta get real. <laughs> Time's running out. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is near. Who wants to see a move of God? Who wants to see revival? Not only in your own life, in your family's life, but in the life of this church, in the life of this community, in the life of our state, our country, and our world. But you know what? It starts with us. It starts with you. It starts with taking a, a good look at yourself looking into your heart, looking at the deeds that you do, the actions that you make, and making sure that they line up with what the word of God says. Second part of verse five, it says, you will be in right standing with God. You will receive not only the blessing, but you will receive righteousness. Who wants to be in right standing with God? Amen? I know I do. You know, church, there's more, there's more to your salvation than just getting saved and just getting to heaven, all right? I've heard, I've heard a preacher say this, this many times, but if there was nothing more to our salvation, why don't they just shoot us after we get saved? Just shoot me in the head, let me go on to heaven. If there's nothing else, for it. But there's so much more. There's so much more. There's so much more glory. There's so much more blessing. There's so many more people that you are going to share your testimony with. That you, through your word, the chains are gonna be broken off of them. You are powerful. You are powerful. You've got to understand and harness the power that's within you. James chapter five tells us that the prayers of a righteous man are powerful and effective. So are you in right standing with God this morning? Do you want your prayers to be powerful and effective? 
Or do you still have unforgiveness in your heart because of what somebody did to you 20 years ago so God's not even hearing your prayers? So where are you this morning? Where are you this morning? I wanna go into verse six in Psalm 24. This really hit me. He said, this is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. The AMP translation says it like this. This is a generation, the description of those who diligently seek him and require him as their greatest need. A Jacob generation. You know what I see sitting out here this morning? I see a Jacob generation. I see a mighty army of God that can turn into the Jacob generation who can see the glory of the Lord, who can see revival. Church, do you wanna see that? Do you wanna see it? Is that where your heart is? Because if not, why are we here? If we don't wanna see lives transformed, if we don't want God to transform our own life, then why are we here? I see a Jacob generation of people who, who diligently seek him and see Jesus as their greatest need. What is the greatest need in your life this morning? Because if it's not Jesus, then you're not where you need to be. You're just not. How do I know? Because I've been there. Jesus wasn't always the greatest need in my life. It was that next drink. It was that next thing. It was that next relationship. You name it. So is Jesus your greatest need this morning? Are you diligently seeking him? Do you wanna be a Jacob generation? In church, we can be that generation. In Jesus' name, we can be that generation who sees and experiences greater things than we could ever think or imagine. You know, the Bible says that we serve an exceedingly abundantly God. He can do exceedingly abundantly more than we could ever think or imagine. But we've got to line up with what the Bible says. If we want the Bible blessings, we gotta do it the Bible way. We've got to stop selling ourselves short of the best of what God has for each and every one of us. Are you selling yourself short? Are you selling yourself short of what God has for you? I was. You know, I, I was told um, not too long ago that I was, I was gung-ho about preaching, about being a pastor. And I kind of took me back for a second, but, but you know what? You're right. I am gung-ho about this stuff because you know why? I know what God has done in my life and I know he can do the same for you. I know that he can. I know the hope that I have is the same hope that you can have. Amen. I know that he can do things that you could never even imagine. I could talk for another two days about what God has done in my life, the breakthroughs that God has, has made in my life the doors that have been opened in my life because I was willing to lay down myself, my agenda, so that I could see his promise, so that I could see his will for my life and my family's life. Amen? Do you want your family to come back together? Do you want your finances to come back together? Do you want your relationships to come back together? Do you want your prodigal son or daughter to come back home? It's time. It's time that we see it. It's time that we see the signs and wonders and miracles here at this church. It's time that we see blind eyes come open. It's time that we see those in a wheelchair stand up and run around this place. It's time for cancer to be healed and, and taken away and sent straight back to hell where it came from in Jesus' name. It's time, church. Are you willing to be that generation? I know I wanna be. I know I wanna be, who's with me? Amen. Who's with me? Amen, praise team, y'all come on up. So church, I've given you the word that God gave me. Now the ball is in your court and the decision is up to you. You may feel hopeless, hopeless this morning, but if there's breath in your lungs, there's still hope. If you were able to get up and walk through those doors this morning, there's still hope. There's still time for God to change your life, 
for God to break those chains of, a, of addiction, for God to, to break those chains of poverty, for God to bring that prodigal son or daughter back home, for God to break that habit off of your life, for God to use you in a mighty way. There's still time. There's still time. There's still hope for a miracle. There's still hope for healing. There's still hope for deliverance. There's still hope for rescue. Amen. Do you receive that this morning? There's still hope. God still moves. God still works. God can still change your life. But it's hinged on repentance. Are you willing to repent? Are you willing to lay the iniquity down, the willful sin down and repent? Are you ready to start listening to that conviction that's in your heart? That, that, that still small voice that's in there saying, don't do it, don't do it. You know where this leads and it doesn't lead anywhere good. Are you willing to start listening to that voice? So what's holding you back as you stand to your feet? What's holding you back? Is it your hands, the deeds, the actions that you have in your life, that you're doing in your life? Is it your heart? Do you have a hard heart this morning? Do you have dirty hands this morning? Do you have idols in your life this morning? Do you have deceit in your life this morning? What's holding you back? It's time for us to say and pray, God, cleanse me. God, make me new. Make me whole, God. I wanna ascend the hill of the Lord. I wanna see your glory. I wanna see your power. I wanna see your signs and wonders and miracles. God, I wanna see it. It's time. You know, I think of, of David in Psalm 51.10. That even after just an unimaginable sin that he committed in his life, two sins, where he murdered a man. Had a man murdered, so he was just as dirty, right? And he committed adultery. If David can say this, why can't you? He said this, he said, create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. If he can say it after all that, why can't you say it? Why can't you say it? You know, this is the time that, that you can do it. I'm gonna open this altar up. If you walked in here this morning and, and you know you had dirty hands, Come down here and wash them off and make them new. Confess your sins. He is faithful and just to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. If you have a hard heart this morning, if you have a calloused heart this morning, if you have unforgiveness in your heart this morning, if you need to apologize to somebody this morning, now's the time to come to this altar. You may need to repent today do you need to change directions in the way that you're going? What do you have going on in your life that's holding you back from ascending the hill of the Lord? You may need to repent today. You may need to forgive today. You may need to apologize today. You may need to pray for that prodigal son or daughter today. That prodigal niece or nephew. Because the same word applies to them. If there's breath in their lungs, there's still hope. Are you willing to intercede for him this morning? You may have listened today and you say, Drew, I, I just don't, I don't have any conviction in my life. I don't have any conviction. I don't have it in my heart. I don't, I don't hear that still small voice. Well, sir, ma'am, if that's you, you need Jesus. You need Jesus to come into your heart and save you, which will allow his Holy Spirit to fill you, 
so that you can have that convictor, so that you can have that comforter, so that you can have that guide in your life. Is that you today? Do you want to give your life to Jesus today? Are you ready to start living your life for Him? Are you tired of playing games and continually being disappointed with what this world has to offer? Are you disappointed this morning? Are you disappointed with the the results you've been getting? Well, if you are, it's time to change. It's time to change. You know, Jesus changed the world over 2,000 years ago. But friend, He can also change your world right now. He can also change your world right now. So I want to pray, and as I pray, make your way to this altar. Let Jesus change you this morning. Let let Jesus come into your heart this morning here in just a minute. We're going to pray a a prayer of salvation. We're going to pray a prayer of salvation. That if you want Jesus to come into your heart and save your spirit, save your soul, and not only do you want to go to heaven, but you want to start living heaven out right here on this earth, you're going to have that opportunity. So as the praise team goes into this song, I'm going to pray real quick and make your way to this altar. Jesus, thank you for your word. God, thank you for your word that never comes back void. God, thank you for the the congregation, the people in here in this place, Lord. And I just pray for each and every one that you spoke to each and every one individually. God, that you spoke to them specifically for the need in their life. And God, I believe you're speaking right now. God, right now, as as people make their way to the altar, Lord, I, I believe that yokes are going to be broken, that lives are going to be changed. The destinies are gonna be rearranged, Lord. And none of us are gonna walk out that back door the same as as what we come in. So God, as we enter into this time of worship, Lord, we just, again, invite your Holy Spirit into this place. Move like you can move and change like you can change. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Let's worship. Don't miss this opportunity to come to this altar. If you need change in your life, now's the time to come. If you know somebody that needs change in their life, now's the time to come.